Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to look at scroll saws and what they call scrolling. Now I'm not a big scroll saw user so this is going to be kind of a, an elementary a starter if you will and if you haven't looked into scrolling I can suggest to you that it might be something that you want to look at. It's a, a, a tremendous amount of things that you can do with scroll saws and I had my eyes open just recently when I did a little bit of background research on this because uh, a number of people, quite a number of people, have asked us to do uh, a video on scroll saws and that's what this video is going to be about. It's a very basic video on how to get started on scroll sawing. But before we get started, I want to take you to my office and I want to show you what I found on Google and all of the cool things that you can do with scroll saws. Here we are back in my office and I've got Google on the screen behind me and I'm going to do a, a close-up and zoom in and show you exactly what I'm doing. So here we are at my computer now, and I've, I'm going to type in scroll saw patterns, and I've pre-done this so that it's quicker. This is what it comes up with, a list of websites, but it also comes up with some images, and if you click on images on your browser, it will show you a, a list of all of the different things, all the, uh, uh, the, the graphics of all the things associated with scroll sawing. And when we look through this, I'm absolutely amazed at all of the things that people do with scroll saws and that's what I wanted to show you, just a, a brief run through. This is called fretwork where they make these very tiny holes and, and cut out and all, this is all done on, on a scroll saw. Here's a place where somebody's taken some solid wood pieces and carved or, or cut out on the scroll saw uh, little figurines. Uh, somebody here has made some enhancement. This is particularly nice. Uh, perfect for furniture and doors and all sorts of things like that. Uh, here somebody's made a 3D fretwork. They've made a Ferris wheel actually out of um, this very intricate work. This is very popular in scroll sawing where they take an image of something and create a very high contrast version of it and then you cut away certain parts of it, you cut away the the white parts of it and, and leave part of it. In this case all the white parts are wood that's what's been left. The black part is what's been cut away and it's been put against the black background to show that high contrast. So that's another thing that you can do. Uh, this one here, I like this. Somebody here has made some chess pieces, carved little chess pieces or, or cut chess pieces with a scroll saw. And when you look down, you see all of the different things. There's toys. This is another very popular thing in scrolling. It's called intarsia. This is basically like a wooden puzzle. And of course they use different kinds of woods, sometimes they'll uh, color woods, but usually they'll just use different kinds of woods and cut them out in a puzzle form and put them all back together. Uh, very interesting work. When you, get, when you scroll further down you'll see that there's people make toys, uh, little piggy banks, there's all sorts of things, and then there's signs, uh, there's a gone hunting sign, there's all sorts of different things that you can do for signage, um, Christmas decorations, um, Christmas tree decorations. There's another kind of, of, I guess that's actually a, it looks like a coat rack, but it could be just as easily a sign. And when I scroll down, I just see all sorts of different things that people are doing with scroll saws. Very, very innovative ideas. And I encourage you to go to your computer and have a look down. When you get near the bottom, you can click on Show More Results. And if you ever want inspiration, uh, this is what you can look at and see all of the different things that people are doing with scroll saws. Very, very interesting. Lots of great ideas there. So, go to your own computer and check that out. Now, in the world of scroll saws, this particular unit 
Uh, this is my unit and this is a very basic little saw but it has some interesting points and for what our discussion is today it'll be perfect. So basically what a scroll saw is is a very tiny blade that moves very rapidly up and down and the wood actually feeds through on the table here and you can do as you can see on Google you can do all sorts of interesting things. So what's what's interesting and what what to look at with a scroll saw this is important how the, what the throat is if you're going to do bigger pieces of course you want a bigger throat some of the blades that this blade or, or this saw will take two kinds of blade what they call a pin blade and uh, a plane blade and people may know them by different names and we're going to show you some close-ups of that later on um, changing the blade on some of these, this particular one uh, is a bit more difficult changing the blade and as you get more advanced saws it's easier to change the blades. Now what I liked about this little saw, two things, uh, I purchased this at a garage sale for I think it was fifty or sixty dollars, it was pretty cheap and I see these on Craigslist and all sorts, Kijiji, all sorts of places for pretty inexpensive and if you're going to get started in scroll sawing this is a great little model to start with because it takes both the pinned and the plain blades which means you can do a fair bit with it. The disadvantage is this particular one doesn't have a little blower. Some of them have a little built-in little blower with a little tube that comes down to, right down to the blade and it actually blows the dust away for you. This one doesn't have that so that's a nice little feature to have. The other thing that this model does not have is it's not variable speed and that's another nice thing to have is a more advanced model will have a variable speed so depending on the type of material that you're using or the type of work that you're doing and the blade that you're using you'll be able to adjust that but just the same if you're thinking about getting started in scroll sawing or you just want to know a little bit about it this is a great way to start because it's amazing all the different things that you can do with a little saw just like this so let's start off by having a quick look at blades now this is a what they call a pin type and you notice there's a little pin going through the blade and there will be a pin at the top and the bottom and these little blades they actually come in a pretty good selection of different sizes and widths so this is called a pin type now the other three blades that I have are just plain or, or non-pin type and you'll notice that there's quite an amazing difference in widths this is obviously a, a, a much thicker blade uh, for doing a little bit more rougher, bigger work or thicker work on thicker woods um, and, and maybe pushing it a little bit uh, harder because it is a, a fairly thick blade. But once you get over to these little thin blades and if you look closely you'll notice there's a little bit difference in the tooth pattern but these are all of these are plain blades and this is a plain blade as well you'll notice there's no pins in the top of these and these blades basically just clamp there's a special clamping system on the top and the bottom above and below the uh, scroll saw table that clamp these top and bottom and then the blades move up and down. Now I don't have a huge selection of blades here but I can tell you I was amazed by the number of blades there are. There's um, very all sorts of different tooth styles. There's um, circular blades or, or um, spiral blades. Uh, all sorts of different things for different work that you might want to do. In the package of blades that I purchased there's three different kinds and when you flip it over it actually gives you a description of what blade works best for what kind of material and how fast you want to cut. So this is a, a good way of starting off how, learning how to use, how to select the blades for the kind of material that you're cutting. 
Now, generally, but not always, because it depends on the style of blade that you're using, but generally, the, the orientation of the teeth want to go down, just like a bandsaw goes down. And the reason for that is when it's cutting into the wood, it, as a rule, and, and again this can change depending on the blade that you're using and the material that you're cutting, but generally you want the blade to be pushing down on the material. If you oriented the blade so that it's up, it's going to tend to want to catch the material and pull it up on you, uh, and that's why it's nice to have the, the blade so that it's orienting down, so it's pushing against the table. It's a little bit easier to handle. So just a, a, a quick tip on that. Now that's not always true. As I say, it depends on the type of blade that you're using. Now depending on the kind of work that you might be doing, in some cases you may want to, to adjust the table. And you can, most of these saws, you can either adjust the table, if you get a better quality saw, you can actually adjust the entire head, which is actually easier to work with. Uh, so if you get more into scrolling and you decide you want to get invest in a better quality um, saw, you'll probably be looking for one where the head actually tilts rather than just the table. Now you've already probably figured out that I'm sitting down talking to you, and I am, and that's one of the good things about scroll sawing, is it's actually one of the few woodworking things that you can actually sit down and work at, and some of the better quality saws actually come with their own stand, all you need to do, to do is supply your own little stool, and you can actually sit there uh, in front of your scroll saw with a nice light and and actually work away you don't have to stand up and move around uh, it you can just sit right in front of the saw and, and do all your work but let's have a look at some of the work that you can do with saws and why you want to select different blades now the reason I have my scroll saw sitting on one of these anti-skid pads is because I don't have a permanent place for it so I put it on one of these pads to keep because they tend to vibrate a bit and if I had a permanent one I'd have it on a permanent stand and I'd have it secured on there or if I used it a lot most of these have holes that you can actually secure them, screw them or bolt them to a fence but I'm going to turn it on in a second here and I find with the pad for the small amount of scrolling that I do it seems to work fine for me but I'm going to turn it on now so that you can see what a scroll saw looks like in action I like about scroll saws from my own personal woodworking is that I can make things like this. This is like a, a, a vine that I can actually do a little bit of carving on, ease the edges a bit, and I actually have some carving tools that I do that with. And if you've got any carving tools, you'll be able to see just how easy it is when you get something like this to ease the edges and carve it a bit so you can actually enhance some of the projects that you're working on by putting some really cool detail on it like this that looks like you've spent an awful lot of time but it's actually fairly easy when you get down to it. Now when you're figuring out the kind of things that you want to get into when you're scrolling uh, there's the, the internet is filled with actual scroll saw patterns and they're everything from intarsia which remember the little they're like a little wooden puzzle to the fret work which is the work with all the holes in it but you can even get things like this and a lot of things you can download for free print them on your printer and then you know guess what uh, Elmer's spray on glue you cut this out you spray on the back, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and then stick that onto whatever you want to use. And you can cut yourself out something pretty quickly, whether it's letters or designs, whatever it is. And if you get into fret work, that's cutting all the little holes like a, a pot holders and trivets and things like that, clocks with all sorts of fancy pattern work on them. The way they do that is they actually use a fine, uh, a very fine drill and they'll actually 
when they'll, they'll have the pattern, the pattern will be glued onto a board, and they'll actually drill a small hole. And then when they go to their scroll saw, what they do is they actually release the blade, they release the top of the blade, so that it's just that little, it's just almost like a little wire sticking up, and they put the top of the blade through the hole and put it back down on, and that's how they make all the little holes. So that's the amount of work there is in those. Each one of those little holes, you have to have a, and that's why a better saw than this one works quicker because there's a quick release clamp on them that quickly releases the top of the blade you've got a, a holes drilled throughout so you move over drop the, the your piece of work through one of the holes and then you proceed to cut around that pattern and cut that little hole on the inside out and that's how they do all the fret work so you can see why you'd want to be sitting on a stool to do that because it really is a, it can be a, a lengthy process and that's why those works uh, can command so much money because there's a lot of time invested in them. Scroll saws are pretty versatile in the materials that they'll cut. Uh, there's a natural wood and that's a three quarter inch, it's pretty thick and this little scroll saw will go through that without any problem. There's all sorts of plywoods, uh, different things, um, MDFs or man-made materials, all sorts of different things like that that you can use that work fine with that. But you know what? If you, if you get into making signs, you can even use things like plexiglass and plastics, foam, um, you know, rigid foam, that's what we use to make the woodwork website. It's actually not wood letters, uh, a little secret there, it's actually foam uh, and it's painted wood because that was a, an easier material for us to cut. So there's lots of different materials that you can use, different materials and different thicknesses. So you have a wide variety of things that you can cut on your scroll saw. I'm not even going to do any scrolling today because I don't think you really need to see that and it's a little bit tedious to watch on a video anyway. We will ask you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. We ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web and particularly for this video you're going to want to go to our homepage on Woodwork Web uh, and look up uh, scroll saw because we're this article that we will put with this video there will be a lot of links on it on blades and patterns and machinery uh, all sorts of things like that. So for me I've got my own little project and I'm doing some carving on that for a future project that I'm going to be working on and I think today you've been introduced to what scroll saws can do. We hope it's enlightened your world. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.